hand it back to you, chain of evidence. You need to leave right now. The, let, let me let me just escalate no, this to ten. Right the only way that's going to well, happen go. is if you call the police. I'm not leaving. Okay. Everybody else out. Yeah, and all I'm saying is I'm leaving this here for you. So as a state employee, are you not going to accept that? I just need to get that on camera. So you're recording me? Oh, absolutely, and 100%. You didn't report that before. You just need to go, you know the attorney okay. general is? Go to his website and look on it. It instructs you as you a public just, servant to do it. I know what you're trying to do. You're going to put this on YouTube, whatever you want to do. No, it's not about that. It's about making you comply with the rules. Right. The other option is to actually physically walk into one's building and seek redress in person. It's just because of the COVID and the way things have changed, we no longer are doing things directly in person. Have you been on probation before? Like, what brought you in the office to begin with? Just to kind of get a public records request one. Oh, okay. So once you get that, you'll be on your way? I'm uh, just collecting information. Looks like you got some material on the wall and whatnot, so might be here for a little bit. And do, what interest do you have in our building is what I'm asking. So he's uh, reciting whatever RCWs is that he has the right to be there. Nobody has the right to remove him because of certain signs and blah, blah, blah. Are you familiar with anything like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So he's probably a First Amendment audit guy. Okay. And so if he's in public access, he has a right to film. Hey everyone, I have a story here that is highlighting the continued unwillingness of the Washington State Department of Corrections to behave appropriately in many circumstances. These circumstances include their poor behavior at many locations that have been visited for legitimate press reasons to investigate issues that have been provided to me by tips and leads. Additionally, the incongruency between what is written in the Washington State Administrative Codes and the revised codes of Washington and the Public Records Act. The Department of Corrections has, with few exceptions, time and again demonstrated that it does not want to interact with the public in ways that are considered appropriate. DOC very much believes in rules for thee, not for me. A perfect example of this is their selective interpretation of the Public Records Act by way of their published administrative code for administering public records requests. In Washington Administrative Code 137-08-090, it is written that all requests for the disclosure of a public record, other than requests by incarcerated individuals for inspection of their health record or central file, must be submitted in writing directly to the Department of Corrections Public Records Officer. However, in RCW 42.56.080 Section 2, it is written that agencies shall honor requests received in person during an agency's normal office hours or by mail or email for identifiable public records unless exempted by provisions of this chapter. This is one more way that a state agency is attempting to circumnavigate in-person encounters with the people. However, in this story you are watching today, you'll notice that the DOC headquarters staff admit that no one is in the office, but for a few individuals, such as the man and woman you're about to see, and specifically, the public records officer is not on site. This is a way for the government to vet who and what they want to conduct business with. If you can show up in person, they have to deal with you one way or another, and in a very obvious way, since you can record your public officials in the courses of their duty, and then hold them to account. However, if it is done by email or letter, there is a litany of ways for the state to round file your requests, demands, etc., and bury you under piles of bureaucratic shenanigans. Let's check this continued abuse by the Department of Corrections out again, shall we? Hey everyone, I am free. It's September 13th, 2023. I am in Tomwater, Washington in Thurston County. I'm gonna be checking out the Department of Corrections here at this facility.
facility you see right there. Hello. Hello. Looks like I need to sign in. Yeah, what are what are you here for? Oh, it's multiple things. Okay. What's going on? I just need to talk to different agencies. Well, the only public space we have in the building is the lobby. So I can have them come down. I just need to know who you're here to see so I can call yeah, them. Yeah, DOC and DOT. Do you know who so I can call them? Uh, I don't actually. trying to bring to him? I'd really rather not discuss that with you. Sorry. Just want to keep it between me and the uh, public servant. Okay. This is kind of a problem with the uh, agencies when they have uh, vetting like this. It's sort of like they're picking and choosing when they get a deal with the with citizens. Well, it's more, um, a lot of them work from home, so it's more who to call. I'm just going to start with DOC. We have a management services up there, so I'll Great. call them and see if they can come down. Yeah, my understanding is this is actually the headquarters for DOC, right? Yes, it is. Good. I thought I'd give you the right place. Um, what can I do for you? Hi. i got a couple of questions. Uh, I don't know who I should be speaking to about this, but I've had an ongoing problem with public records requests with uh, the Department of Corrections. Uh, yes, I'm looking to get a public records request form, please. Um, they're online? Yeah, I'm just looking to get a physical copy. Okay. Let's see what I can do. Thank you. Hi. Hey. Can I help you? Yeah, looking for a public records request form. Um, okay. Uh, you can find it online. Have you looked online? No. Uh, no. Just looking to see if I can get a physical copy here. Well, I mean, we can, yeah, we can see what we can do. Okay, cool. Thank you. Have you been on probation before? Like, what brought you in the office to begin with? Just to kind of get a public records request form. Oh, okay. So once you get that, you'll be on your way? I'm uh, just collecting information. Looks like you got some material on the wall and whatnot. So might be here for a little bit. And do, what interest do you have in our building is what I'm asking. You know, uh, probation, have you been on probation before? I just don't really answer questions of the state. What's that? I don't answer questions of the state. You don't answer questions in the state? Of the state. Of the state? Yeah. Okay, but once you once you get your form, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna ask you to leave. You don't belong in this in this lobby because you're not on probation. This is for super, supervision of active offenders, and you're not. So this isn't a government building. It is, but to come in here, you need to be on probation. Otherwise, you don't have a purpose in the building. Really, I do have a purpose. What is your purpose? Gathering content for a story. For who? Gathering content for a story. For a story. Are you a public employee? Yeah. I'm gonna fill this out and I'll submit it to you. I need a record of that logged and then I'll need something to indicate I submitted it to you. Uh, I can make a copy of it and give it to you. That'll work, yeah, if you got like a stamp or something like that. Uh, I don't have a stamp. But I can make a copy of it. What? Something. I can't hear you, what? We'll make, sure, we'll make sure that you got the proof that you submitted it. Okay, all right. Okay, so are you going to take it or not? It's on I camera. Told to have you hold on to this. The supervisor's coming out. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to have to, uh, you can report it where you want. You, oh, no. you, you're going to have to send this in to, to them, okay? Because we don't do public records here, okay? There's a unit that does all that stuff, okay? So that's where you're going to have to send it out to. What's your name? All right. My name is Jerry. And you're the supervisor here? I'm the supervisor here. Okay. What's your name? Steve. Okay, Steve. Yeah. So here's the thing. I'm going to leave But here's the... this. Here's this. I'm not taking it. Well, then 
Yeah, hold you're, on. you're gonna have to send that. Hold on, Taylor. We're, we're not gonna put a stamp on, on it, okay? Listen, you have to send that. I'm gonna drop this here on video. If you, you fail to transfer this, you go ahead what you want if to you do. fail to transfer this to state, it's a hundred dollars a day fine. There's a, there's a public. You just need to go. You know who the attorney okay. general is? Go to his website okay. and look on it. It instructs you as you a public just, servant to do it. I know what you're trying to do. You're going to put this on YouTube, whatever you want. No, to it's do. not about that. It's about okay. making you comply okay. with the rules. All right. So. All right. There's that. So you got to mail that to the public records unit. It says right there, right underneath your signature. Yeah, that that's a, a policy for the department of corrections that's just for you guys right but i we don't fill the public so if we leave that with us then we have no way of filling your request oh yeah you do the uh rcw 4250 sex is really clear if i fill it out and give it back to you you have to accept it in the chain of custody and pass it along to whoever it is within your organization to take it but as a public employee as a state employee you have to do it it's compelled under law so uh, could I just get a copy of that and a stamped, uh, or a stamper, you know, whatever. You could just put your date and signature on it. That's fine. Just want to make sure that gets transferred, though, because if it does it after I leave it here, it's a $100 fine against the state per day. Yep. You can come back when there's a supervisor, because I'm not going to go against our DOC policy. And if it's oh yeah, DOC policy is not law. You can go ahead and talk to the supervisor about that. Yeah, They'll yeah. be back. You're still a state employee. State. You have to abide by all state laws. And I mean. all I'm saying is that you can talk to the supervisor. Yeah, and all I'm saying is I'm leaving this here for you. So as a state employee, are you not going to accept that? I just need to get that on camera. So you're recording me. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. Did you report that beforehand? Oh no. I also believe that is against the law. Oh, okay. Call the cops then. Let's get them over here. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take the ride down to the detention center if you want to do that. Well, sir, you've been told what we require you to do for public disclosure. Oh, slow your roll there. I'm not a prisoner. I'm not so, on probation or parole. I'm not. No, no. You're in custody of it. You're in custody of it. So you can send that to public disclosure if you would like to request. Re so there is a Department of Corrections public records request form. It exists. Okay. All you guys got to do is just find the file on your computer right click it select print and then it comes out of the machine that does the thing and then when you're done with that you can hand it to me and then i fill it out and hand it back to you yeah, so we have information on file yeah if you're talking about process. the washington administrative code nope, the, that's not what i'm referring to i'm right here is the information on doing public disclosure requests so i have an address an email address phone number yeah. all that kind of stuff so there's a guy of significance his name's bob ferguson you might heard of him he's the attorney general for the state of washington so he gave four four modalities of dropping off or creating a public records request one of them if you go to his website and search for obtaining records you'll scroll down about 60 percent of the way and you'll see that one thing you can do is go to any department agency building ask them to print out a public records request form i fill it out hand it back to you chain of evidence you need to leave right now the, let, let me let me just escalate no, this to ten. Right the only way that's going to well, happen go. is if you call the police. I'm not leaving. Okay. Everybody else out. So, if you're trespassing, are you trespassing me? I don't know who you are, but you need to leave. The only way it's going to happen is if you trespass. Me. All right. So call the police. Okay, I'm going to go in and do a public records request. You're not I'm going not in. I'm coming in our facility right You're going to deny me a public records request? I'm denying you going in. You, you can do a public records request. I don't have to do that. I do not have You're to not do that. You're not coming in. Are you, is the door locked? Because if it's not, I'm going in. It will be locked. You're not going in. I am going in. I need to go in and get this public records request done. Look, the quicker you guys get a public records request for me, the better. You will have to go through our headquarters. I do not have to do that. I can do it at any state agency. Okay. And I'm, I'm really trying to figure out how I start the process of, of resolving this. So um, is that something I would talk to you about or someone else? Well, probably not me, but you have, you've contacted public records and you've asked to speak to their managers. Is that correct? No, I'm showing up to the headquarters to actually speak to that person because I'm trying to seek redress with, the, with DOC in person. Okay, so let me see if I can find a manager of public records upstairs and I'll see if I can have them come down and speak with you. Great, okay. It. Thank you. Can I get your name and. It's Gandalf. Okay.
And it's not spelled traditionally. It's G Here, can you just put down your information for me? Yeah, you're good. And then I'll see what I can find out sure. for you. There you go. Okay. And I will be back. Appreciate or they it. will. Okay, thanks. I'm uh, Ed from the PDU unit. Cool. And Great. Great. Anyone talk to you. somebody? Yeah, so I've been, uh, I'm a journalist that works in Washington State, and I've been, well, really, the Pacific Northwest, really at like Washington, Idaho, Montana, Oregon. And over the last year, mm -hmm. I've been having both good and bad experiences with DOC at field offices and other locations when it comes to public disclosures. And on some hands, like, or in some cases, like uh, Pasco, no sweat. Uh, the new manager in Olympia, the DOC field officer, totally great guy, no sweat. In other cases, Yakima, uh, DOC employees acting like absolute lunatics, absolute maniacs. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out why is there such a stark difference from one field office to the next where you've got people that are just flagrantly going out of their way to uh, not only follow the Public Records Act, but in some cases, Jerry down in Yakima making physical contact with my body and stuff like that. That's just a good way to not have a, a situation go sideways. And I'm, I'm really trying to figure out from leadership, which is why I'm coming to the headquarters for the state DOC, why is this happening? Like, what's going on? And why is there such a, such a problem with people going in to actually do public records requests in person? Well, because basically nobody's manned at the offices and stuff to really do that. I mean, you got one person, I'm the only one that's even up there, and we got to deal with phone calls, letters, emails, all that stuff to deal with the request. We don't have time to come down and deal with the public. And in reality, you can put a request in public, like you are right now. If you had a request and you put it on paper, I could take it up, make a copy of it, stamp it, bring it back down, give you the copy so you know it got it, and it would show yeah. the date and everything. There's nothing that says you can't make other requests in public or in person, I guess I should say. It's just because of the COVID and the way things have changed, we no longer are doing things in, directly in person. So there's just not enough people in office to be able to deal with the five different ways you can actually do the request. I appreciate, I can appreciate that to an extent, but what, what I'm getting at is like, for example, go to Pasco. All right, here you go, sir. Anything right. else I can help you with? That's it, thanks. All right, have a good day. You too. There is that. I just want to see if I could get a copy of it. And I'm, yeah, is it signed, received, or if you got a stamp? I don't know what you guys do here, but <laughs> nice. There was two guys in the office, had no problem. They were polite, cordial, extremely helpful. Asked for a PRR mm -hmm. uh, form, we printed out, they gave it to me. I filled it out, handed it back. I think I was in there yeah. for. And I, to be honest, as far as one office versus the other, I, there's no way I could give you that answer. I well, mean, I wouldn't have the ability to do that because I can't speak on behalf of them. For one. Well, and that's awkward in a particularly awful way because I'm at headquarters. Somebody here should be able to deal with well, that. Well, no, that's what I'm trying to tell you is there's nobody directly in the office right now. The I'm just an uh, office assistant, three. I have no authority over anything other than I take a physical request and I put it sure. in. If you want to put in a request to get the record, things like that. If you want to give me your information and have Denise or... One of the managements get a hold of you. I can do that. What I'd like to do is actually just physically meet in, in my building and seek redress of my grievances directly with whichever public servant is. You know, so here. what you would have to do? I mean, all public yeah. records have to be put on paper and be sent in and no, applied to that. Way. That's not what I'm asking about. Okay. So I, I appreciate that. Uh, you are right, of course, about having to put it down on paper. Um, but I'm looking to seek redress of my grievances regarding the grievances I just lodged with you here at the headquarters building for the Department of Corrections in the state of Washington. I'm having a plethora of problems uh, in some cases, and in other cases, totally fine DOC employees that are doing the right thing. But what it seems like is there is an, an enormous problem with training DOC-wide, because otherwise, I should be able to walk into every single office, no matter where I go, and the public employees have all received the exact same training. But in some cases, some get so angry 
They make physical contact with my body in an attempt to show and demonstrate their displeasure at the audacity of a citizen coming in to do a public records request. I mean, imagine that felonious activity, right? Going in to do a public records request. I'm sure it enrages Jerry and Yakima all the time. The point that I'm trying to get at is I'm here in my state headquarters building mm -hmm. looking to speak with someone. And even though Governor Inslee got rid of the executive order for the emergency six months ago, I still can't seek redress of my grievances with my public employees because they're at home and they're their jammies working from home doing whatever it is that's part of the contrast with the state and the unions and stuff as far as that yeah but i don't work with the unions i, what I do is I, I hire public employees and if i have a problem with the public employees i come seek redress in my grievances with them directly but what has happened is the leadership of dnc has chosen even beyond the ending of the pandemic to avoid me having the ability to seek redress of Well, have you ever put in a formal request to, to meet with them directly? Yeah, I'm you here formally doing Correct, but in writing, have you no, actually written I don't thing? have to do that. No, that's but you're asking point. me to put in a request for you to talk to them, and that's just something I can give you an email, and you can email and, get, and make that appointment. We're I don't having, make appointments. We're having an enormous disconnect here. While that is certainly one option, and I do agree with you it is an option. I could fax a request, I could email, I could snail mail. The other option is to actually physically walk into one's building and seek redress in person. But they are not here. Well, it needs to get fixed. So, so here you, I am. You are more than happy to come in every day and see if they're here. But unless you give a direct, give me your email on paper, write down your email, your contact information, then they can set up an appointment with you, but they're not going to just come in here every day because they think you might show up. Well, That's what I'm trying to tell you. You want us to work with you, go, but you're not. What is your option? How the, about I lodge my request as I'm doing with you right now as a public employee. You go on behalf of me as a citizen lodging that request upstairs, email on my behalf, make a phone call to Steve or Susie or whoever it is and say, there's a person here that wants to come back. What days are you available? You will come down with, let's say, 5, 10, 15, whatever the options are. Say, uh, you know, Susie, the administrator of X, is available on this day. Which one of these days works for you? Great. Dan both will come back on the 15th of November. Whatever well, I'm not going to guarantee that they're going to give me any time frame. Within 15, 20 minutes, they're all meetings in other places. I sometimes can't get a hold of them myself for a while. Do you have an email address that we can forward? If you give me an email address, I... I, I got a number got part anything. of the story that i'm trying to gather here as a journalist is that it's a consistent pattern of behavior and i'm not saying it's either of your faults it really isn't this is leadership this is the director of doc causing whether whether that person intends to or not causing a problem for citizens to come in to do this because everything goes back to go away citizen deal with us by email this inconvenience of having to have, well, but that's what's happening. I can't seek redress of my grievances here. No one's here. Correct. I understand that. But you're also wanting it to where we're supposed to just give up everything else that's already planned and scheduled for the day to come in and meet you for this no, reason. No, that's completely not okay. what I said. Let me, re let me restate what I said. Well, that's what I said. You're, not, you're wanting me to go up there and try to contact him, right? Yeah. Basically what I'm getting is you want me to go up and say, hey, he wants to meet with one of the directors. What times and days are available? And what for you? days are available because he feels that you need to meet him in person. Yes. So absolutely. he can talk to you. Yeah. And then you want me to come down, back down, and try to give you that time frame. Yeah. So, like, if you, let's say you come down with 10 or 12, 15 options, whatever. Say, so, hey, you know, obviously they're busy people. I absolutely appreciate that. I can't, I can't expect a director to just say, this journalist that came is the most important person in the world. They've got busy schedules, they've got things to do. That's why they're doing what they're doing. But if they come down, or if you come back down, for example, and say, here's a range of options. The first available date is October 12th, whatever it is, right? Um, and then here's some other dates. Do any of these times work for you? Yes, absolutely. Pencil me and Gandalf will come back on the 12th of October at 9 a.m. and meet with Director McStevenson or whoever it is. Okay. Well, I'm going to definitely go up there and give you that I, and go based on what they, I have no problem with that. At least I, I can put that. in a request. For you to meet in person and see if they'll come back to me but it could be 15 minutes could be an hour before That's i get right. a response i am happy to wait i mean this is the beautiful thing about calendars is they list what is and what isn't open so you know director mcstevenson or whoever it is may be able to look in there and be like 
Yeah, but I am booked solid for the next two weeks. Yeah, fair enough. I can totally appreciate and respect that. Worst case, I can go ask and see what I get. Yeah, and I mean, I hope that this is something where the leadership of DOC can appreciate that the public that they serve, as public servants, can you know do something rather simple, which is just to say, yeah, I've got these dates and times. So, are you a personal reporter doing your own story? Or I own my own media company. Own oh, media company. Yeah, okay. I've got a media company out of Wyoming. Okay. I'll see what I can find out. Okay. Thank you. Denise or any of the other higher up people, all of them are in meetings, things like that. I don't have access to the direct calendar. Okay. So what I would suggest and what I kind of talked to, I run it by with my supervisor. And I said, the best thing I can do is tell you that by next Friday, if you want to set up time, I'll come down here, I'll meet you, and I'll have a physical yeah. uh, calendar or I something that. that we can figure out something. That sure. Work? No, that's fine. Hey everyone, I am free. It's January 16th, 2024. I'm in the city of Tumwater, Thurston County, Washington State. That building over there is housing the headquarters for the Department of Corrections. It has a Washington State Patrol office in it and a Department of Transportation office in it for Washington State. So I'm going over there to again seek redress of grievances regarding the continued bad behavior overall of the Department of Corrections at different offices that they have. My goodness, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, how are you doing? Not too shabby. I'm here to see if I could speak with someone from DOC, please. Any specific topic? Uh, yeah, I just need to address some uh, issues that I've experienced at uh, DOC field offices. Okay. Thank you. Well, hello, how are Hi. you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I had a recent experience, seems to be an ongoing issue. <laughs> um, I was at the Port Orchard Peninsula work release program facility. Okay. And I was there working on a story. I received tips and leads that there was allegedly some injuries that occurred in their like weightlifting garden area. Okay. In the back. Okay. So I went there to uh, just look into it, really just to get B roll footage initially, sure. just to kind of see like, hey, what does this place even look like kind of a thing? Sure. And uh, wow, the reception was. Uh, a little hostile as in ordering me off the property calling the police and then the police ultimately ended up finding out i had every liberty to be there i i gotta go talk to my supervisor before you can be out back okay he told me i'm on private property well, it's public access but it is private property it's like the library their private property right so is it whenever property? Yes, it's their property. They're saying their private property. And when it's found out that you've perjured, you, you've perjured yourself, that's a felony, and you'll be charged with that. At this point, you are trespassing. You have been given your verbal warning. So the no trespass warning has happened? Yes. Okay. Yes. What's your name, first of all? You don't need my name. This is DOC. This is private property. Hey, I've got one for you. So I'm uh, at Lloyd Parkway at work release. Yeah. And there's a guy with a camera and uh, he's walking around filming saying that he has a right to be there and they, uh, the folks who work there are like, no, we want him trespassed off the property. He won't stop filming here. So I, I tell him, well, you know, you're being asked to leave. It's public access, but it's private property, so you need to leave or what? Like, well, you could be arrested. I could or I will. It's like, well, if it gets to that point, you certainly can be. So he's uh, reciting whatever RCWs is that he has the right to be there. Nobody has the right to remove him because of certain signs and blah, blah, blah. Are you familiar with anything like that? Yeah, he was here yesterday. Oh, yeah. So he's probably a First Amendment audit guy. Okay. And so if he's in public access, he has a right to film. Correct. He's in a public, just like if they come into the police department, they have a right to film. Um, and so if they're in public access parking lot, or is it a public building? It's the work release. It's a secured facility, but it's an open parking lot. He's allowed to, he, then he's allowed to film in the parking lot. Okay. And if they, the property, whoever's in charge of the property, if like if it's in Walmart or something like that, is that different? If they want him to leave the parking lot, <coughs> it's, just, it's 
when you say it's a, is it a private company or is it a government facility? Government facility, the, the work release. Yeah, it's public property. Public property. So it's public property, he can just stand there and film all day? Yep. yep. Okay. All right. They, well, he, he, could sit, he could sit in our parking lot and, watch, and film cops coming in and out of our police station all day long. Nothing we can do about it. Okay. Well, I didn't know that. I thought, uh, just like the library, if it's public access but private property, we get asked to trespass people from... No. The, the library is public property, too. So if they're inside watching porn, um, they can't trespass them? A little bit different. Okay. But as far as being inside the... He's not inside... Yeah, he's, he's not doing anything illegal. I see. Okay. So it's a First Amendment right that he can sit there and film all he wants, and because it's yes. a public access building, going inside, does it make a difference, or just a property? If it's a public access building, he can, just like a police department, he can go in and film inside the police department. So, he, so can, he can sit there and film Heather doing her work at the front desk all day long. Okay. And to give you... So the, he, he was at the at City Hall yesterday, Okay. and he went upstairs to the courts and was filming the courts, and went into the, the council chambers and filmed all around the council chambers because it was unlocked. And so I talked to Sharon, and they were like, well, he can't film here, we have sent the material. I'm like, that's your fault for having it out invisible from the public area. Like, you, have, you, you can't tell him you can't film. Yeah, he can't walk into our security area and film, but he can... Yes. Well, you know, I called the deputy chief, and you are correct. If it's a public uh, building like that, like uh, the city hall or the work release, then you can be in the parking lot uh, filming. Uh, that we can to conduct my investigation as press or a citizen. Right. And I'm just wanting to figure out, A, what led to that occurring in the first place? B, why was the manager, and I, I cannot remember his name, he's got a beard, he wears this, Looks like he wears a flannel frequently. Oh, and I'm not Extraordinarily sure. rude. Okay. Like really aggressive, really rude, trying to order me around. Refused to take a public records request on camera. Okay. Refused. Which is completely in violation of Washington state law. Any person can go to any state agency office. There does not have to be a point that you go to that's right. designated. Absolutely refused. He was hostile, he was rude, mean. Uh, attempted, like I said, to get me arrested, and when that you know blew up, I guess he was just even more angry. Okay. So um, I've released the story. I've also done a follow up. Now okay. I will say in the follow up, uh, two of your officers, one was originally involved in the initial encounter. Uh, both were very polite, you know, so okay. that was good. But I'd really like to figure out that that manager. Can, mind, can I have a piece of paper and a pencil? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Here, I'll just grab one. Thank you. Um, and so this was a Bellingham office, you said? No, no. Uh, this was uh, Port Orchard. Oh, Port Orchard. The Port Peninsula Orchard. Work Release Program. Okay, wearing my triple layer thermal was probably not a good idea this building sweating i'm <laughs> <laughs> so used to you know walking around outside i'm like oh that's really nice to get into a nice warm building you're like that's really hot yeah that's kind of <laughs> how it is at home too well, you walk outside for a few minutes you have to bundle up come back inside and you're like oh my god yeah yeah no kidding um so i i mean i don't know what to say at this point at this point um i could get a hold of that office because the gentleman that you're speaking of i don't know his name okay. i'm not familiar with him um but i could probably get in reference to his supervisor or try to figure out who it is sure you know what um if you give me just a second i may have i generally try to put when i work these stories in case people have questions about you know what happened uh people that follow my stories I often do have the name, and I'm wondering. I know I didn't have his name the first time around, but let me see if I can find it. Give me just a moment here. Okay, let's see here. Oh, there we go. 
Uh, Michael Ison, I-S-O-N, his badge is 4007. Uh, he has an acronym title of RCM. I don't know what that means, but. Okay, I would have to do some, like I said, some research on finding out who this is, seeing if I could find some, a supervisor passing all of this along to them. Do you sure. have a card or something I can I can, I'm happy to give you my email okay. address if you'd like. Yeah, that back again real quick, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't mind doing that, yeah, no then problem. I can try to at least, try to get it to the correct people, I guess I should say. You bet. Um, so the other thing I wanted to address too is just like I said, well, you know, in for all transparency purposes, Absolutely. I've had a, a couple of good encounters through places. Pasco is probably the best one, like the most professional DOC okay. employees I've ever run across in my life. But really, the majority of the other ones, Yakima, Bellingham, Peninsula, and a couple other places, it's just been an absolute train wreck of aggressiveness, unwillingness to assist. Um, the manager at the Yakima office, which happened earlier this year, uh, literally one of the most rude individuals I've ever met. He just I'm was, sorry. he went out of his way to avoid doing the public records request, even when I pointed out to him that I could do it there. And it was just a pride thing. He was just like, I, nope, I already said I'm not gonna do it. I'm not recanting, I'm not gonna do it. And it, it really shines a bad light on the DOC. I think this is low-hanging fruit that in light of all the news that we've heard over the years about DOC, this is low-hanging fruit that the DOC can just pick up, correct, and makes the DOC look good. You know what I mean? Sure. No, I, I agree with you there. I will just have to, like I said, I don't have, I don't know all the information in my head or sure. who these people are, so I'm going to go do my due diligence to figure out who I can get this to and who I can have address the situation. Sure. And if you want, if you want to email me there, what I'll do when I get back to my desk later today or early tomorrow, I can link you to the stories that I've done on DOC, good and bad, because okay. I like to show fairly, evenly, transparently everything so sure. it's not a beat up on doc day thing yeah no i get it um and then from there um highlight what those experiences are so you can actually see them okay and then you know you guys can do what you're going to do at that point okay cool. well i i mean i appreciate your time i yeah. appreciate you telling me all of that and i will do my best to re relay it on to the next person that i can all right everybody well that is it here for today at the DOC headquarters, Department of Corrections headquarters, the Edna Lucille Goodrich building. Uh, you know, this is a constant issue with DOC, which is, you know, having to seek redress of grievances, not getting contacted back. I'm hoping that lady is going to do it. Uh, as you saw earlier from uh, in this video, a visit that I did in the summer, still haven't heard back from them on that. So, uh, this is a follow-up to that follow-up regarding trying to petition the government to seek redress of grievances regarding poor behavior of the Department of Corrections at multiple locations. So, you know, that's all we can do here. Um, I'm just going to keep at it to try to get this issue addressed and uh, go from there. So uh, please like, share, subscribe, hit that all notifications bell so you get my stories right when they release. You can follow me on X, formerly Twitter, at I am free auditing, and you can also help me keep my feet on the streets by going to the links in the description for cash app and venmo really appreciate the help i uh, always say it because you guys are so helpful with that uh keeping my feet on the street so thank you very much that's it for today i'll see you at the next location bye